uh, out of an abundance of caution, CDC and FDA requested a pause uh, in the use of J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine, as a potential re adverse reaction is investigated. Out of the 6.8 million doses already administered in the United States, uh, there are uh, six uh, repo uh, reports of possible uh, blood clots. Um, I have Dr. Peirce, who is here, who can speak in, in more depth um, to that if you have any questions as it relate to it. In terms of the uh, impact on the health department city of Houston, as you know, the NRG, they were using J&J, &J, but that switch has been made now. And so we're moving forward on that end. Um, we have a we had very limited supply of JJ already within within our um, supply systems, and so we are uh, switching over to uh, Moderna. We primarily were using City Pfizer and Moderna, so we don't anticipate having to cancel any scheduled appointments uh, for this week. Uh, so we will move forward. No scheduled appointments. Uh, our supply was rather limited anyway. Uh, which is good in view of what has just taken place early this morning. So from the city of Houston's perspective, as I, we're not anticipated any major disruptions. And as I indicated on Saturday, if anything, uh, it will slow up how we ramp up, move forward. But in terms of scheduled appointments this week, uh, people should still move, should, should go forward. I know there have been some questions as relate to people, for example, who received J&J &J this weekend, uh, what should they do? I'm going to yield on that and, and, and bring up Dr. Peirce, who can specifically address uh, those concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Well, let me start off by saying that these uh, complications, these blood clots, ex uh, appear to be extremely rare. As the mayor said, six cases out of 6.8 million doses uh, have been given. So those are extremely rare. That's literally less than one in a million. Nevertheless, the type of complication is called a, it's a big long name, central venous uh, sinus thrombosis. And it is a, a clot in the brain and it is uh, difficult to treat. They are very rare to begin with. And so one of the questions that the FDA will be addressing is with these uh, cases, is this more or less than we would have expected to see in a population that size anyways? And so we'll be hearing from the FDA on that. Now, Further complicating things is that these, are, uh, these clots are generally treated with a drug called heparin, which is a drug that has been around for many years and is very generally considered to be very safe. But in this case, the early data, again, something the FDA will be looking into, it appears that the heparin may actually complicate things. In terms of folks who have already been vaccinated, it appears that the window, if you're gonna have trouble, is somewhere between one and three weeks after uh, the vaccine was given. And the cases that have the, the uh, FDA and the CDC most concerned are the cases of blood clots uh, in the brain. But to folks who have received the J&J &J vaccine, first of all, number one, again, it is extremely rare. This complication is extremely rare. The uh, Texas Department of, the Department of State Health Services for the state of Texas uh, tells us this morning that none of these cases uh, that we know of are in Texas. So the, apparently none of them have happened to, to any Texas. I just got that just as I was waiting from the Department of State Health Services. Um, the, uh, the other thing though is that if, uh, so the, the particular complication we're worried about right now is, is, is a blood clot in the brain, but you need to know that people can develop blood clots elsewhere in their body. So the current recommendation is for folks that are less than a month from their J&J &J vaccine, if you develop, develop severe headache, Shortness of breath, because you can get blood clots in your lungs. If you get abdominal pain, because you can develop blood clots in your abdomen, or leg pain, because you can develop blood clots in your groin, basically, that can be really serious, that if you have any of those symptoms, you should reach out to your uh, primary care provider and, um, and be evaluated. Again, I want to you know, sort of bring, up, bring it back to where I started. This is extremely rare. The cases that the FDA is looking at are a uh, uh, particularly serious complication. But nevertheless, I think one thing for people to recognize here is that we are fortunate that there are systems, and there's not just one, there are multiple systems in place such that an anomaly that occurs in six out of 6.8 million people gets on the radar. So I think that that speaks pretty well to how strong the filter is to try to catch those things. Mayor? I want to emphasize again, six out of 6.8 million. I want to emphasize that. Uh, because I know when people are hearing things and, uh, and people just took, for example, uh, J and J of the weekend, they're, they're nervous, they're, uh, they just don't know. So I want to emphasize that six out of 6.8 million, none of those six persons, for example, uh, in the state of Texas, 
as far as we know. And so that's good. And then uh, and then bear in mind, if you're outside of, let's say that, let's say that two, three week window, if you're outside of that, if you got this vaccine, for example, in early March or in February, uh, then you are fine. Uh, and then at the same time, uh, I still want to encourage people to get vaccinated, take advantage with the city of uh, Houston Health Department, primarily uses Pfizer or Moderna, okay? Those are the two. And the good news is that we still have these other vaccines that, have, where there's, um, that, that we are still using and they work and they are effective. And then bear in mind that the variants are still very much present here in the city of Houston and you still need to get vaccinated. So I don't want this to slow down people uh, going to their scheduled appointments. Please go to your scheduled appointments. Please get vaccinated, okay? Please get vaccinated. Uh, because what we do know, like yesterday, I think I reported 12 people who died from COVID-19. That's yesterday, 12 people. And if you look at the reports, the daily reports, there has yet to be one single day where I have not reported of somebody dying, several people dying from COVID-19. I would be more fright, more fearful of getting COVID than of take, than getting vaccinated, okay? So let me encourage people to still uh, get vaccinated in the city of Houston. And then the other point that I wanna make, one of your best protections against catching this virus uh, has been something that we've been using since March of last year and that's these masks, okay? And that's why it's still very important to keep these masks on. And as I look around in this room, almost 99% of the people in this room have their masks on. And that's the importance of keeping aware and keeping your mask on, okay? That's your protection and, it, and these masks work. And quite frankly, the only major problem for my mask is just the inconvenience.